Hey guys, welcome to another Best of Netflix. You know how this goes, so let's get it started. So first up, we have Action. This week I chose Serenity. Um, this one was a continuation of the television show Firefly, also on Netflix. Um, this one's basically like space pirates slash cowboys. It's really an interesting concept, but I mean, I never watched this television show before I actually watched the movie. I went into this movie knowing nothing about this universe, but I actually have a lot of fun with this movie. The only downside is that re-watching it recently, the graphics are a little bit dated, just a tiny bit. You can clearly tell that some of it's pretty CG, um, but it was like 10, 15 years ago. So, I mean, it's kind of explained that, you know, I can let it go that this movie isn't perfect. Um, but fun fact, this was actually written and directed by Joss Whedon, the same guy who did Avengers 1 and 2. Now, when I rewatch this, um, I really saw a lot of the Avengers stuff in, in Serenity. Um, I saw a lot of the themes, similar camera angles, similar set types. Um, but it's still definitely a fun movie to watch. You don't really have to know, again, like I did about the series. I, didn't, I knew nothing. So, I mean, I went into this completely fresh. But it's really a fun movie. A little bit complicated, but you'll definitely enjoy the action in this movie. So, definitely check it out. Up for horror this week, I decided to go with something that I just watched. It's unfortunately not very critically acclaimed, and I kind of understand why. But I really liked it a lot. A lot of the themes were there. And that's the movie The Lazarus Effect. This one is about a bunch of scientists who are experimenting with a serum to bring the dead back to life. Now, one of them accidentally dies in the lab. They inject her with the serum, and she comes back to life, and some crazy stuff starts happening. It... It definitely had some good things about it. It had a lot of great things about it, which is why I'm definitely recommending this. But there are some plot holes. There are some little things that aren't going to be like fully there, fully developed. But it's definitely a fun movie with a lot of good concepts. And I wish they would have made it a little bit better, but it is what it is. You can't really complain. Plus, it has Evan Peters and Donald Glover. And basically, I would love to watch a movie of just those two. They're great together, and they're great separate, but they're even better together, and I would love to watch a film of them together. So definitely check out The Lazarus Effect. Now for classics this week, I decided to do To Catch a Thief, which came out in the 1950s. It's actually an Alfred Hitchcock film starring uh, Grace Kelly and Cary Grant. Um, this one is about Cary Grant, who is a retired thief, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, he gets sort of framed for these various... Uh, thefts that are happening around the French Riviera. He basically has to, like the title says, to catch a thief, try and find out who is kept, who is copying, essentially, how he's stealing things and framing him for it in order to catch them so and prove that he's not doing these thefts, these heists. Um, it's a pretty interesting story. I mean, I'm not that huge into, like, this type of Alfred Hitchcock story. I like a lot of his creepier stuff. But this one's definitely interesting. It gave, like, this new sort of capture your imagination type of thing. It's a real whodunit, which is a lovely story that I love. I love it when people do whodunits. They're probably one of my favorite genre types, I guess, if it is a genre. Subgenre, really. Um, but definitely check this one out. If, it not, if it's not only because it's a classic, it's also because, for some reason, when I watch, like, a 1950s movie, I feel like I should dress up all fancy. Because it's very stylized, which is really a good concept. I mean, it was the style of then, but it's interesting to watch now. And it just makes you feel like you want to dress up all fancy. So check it out. Up for comedy, I decided to do Without a Paddle. Now, this one has to be probably one of my most all-time favorite comedies. It came out in, like, the early 2000s, if I'm not wrong. It has uh, Matthew Lillard, Dax Shepard, and Seth Green. They play three best friends who decide to go on a camping trip after pretty much falling out of touch. But once one of their closest friend dies, um, they decided to finally take this trip, and a bunch of crazy stuff happens. Um, it's got so much great comedy in this film. Uh, you actually felt like the chemistry was pretty real between the guys, at least I felt like. It's a good outdoor adventure, but only watch the original. When you look up Without a Paddle, only watch with these three guys in it. There have been plenty of sequels. They're garbage, so don't even waste your time. Um, this one is the original. Definitely watch this one. Now on to family. Um, I decided to go with Mr. Peabody and Sherman. This was actually a really surprising movie to me. Um, I was unsure about the concept when I first saw the trailers for it a couple years ago. I finally got to watch it, and it was actually pretty good. I liked the comedy in it. It was great. It's a time travel story. I love time travel stories for some reason. 
Um, this one did it in a really interesting way, and I think because it was animated and in a kid's version, I'm talking about the movie, by the way, not the Netflix cartoon, so when you look it up, watch the movie, not the original show. Um, but I like how they did with playing with time and doing it in a kid's way. Kids' time travel is a lot of fun for me. I don't know what it is. I think because time travel in adult films, or not <laughs> not adult films, not those films, um, in more contemporary films, I guess, more age-appropriate films, they take themselves a little too seriously. Like, Bill and Ted was that sort of tween, I guess, pre-early teens. Um, so, yeah, basically, definitely check this one out. That's great for the kids. It's great for watching with the family. Even if you just want to watch a good animated film, definitely check this one out. Now on to documentaries. This is probably one of the weirdest, not weirdest, but it's very interesting documentary to me. It's called Super Size Me. If you have not heard about this film, it's been out for quite some time. It's about a guy who eats McDonald's for every meal for 30 days. He basically tracks the results on what it does to his body. It, it, he talks about some things McDonald's does with their food processing, stuff like that. It basically turned McDonald's on its head. It exposed a lot of things about McDonald's that people didn't like, nutritional facts and stuff like that that people didn't like. Um, but for some reason, it does the opposite to me. Like, when I watch this film for some reason, I don't know what it is, but it makes me want to go and eat McDonald's. I don't know if it's my inner fat kid. I don't know what it is, but check it out. It's definitely an interesting concept. I mean, McDonald's has drastically changed their um, menu, their style of food, pretty much basically everything since this documentary came out, and it's worth checking out. All right, on to romance and drama. Um, this one has a little bit of both, and I think it's probably one of the most visually stunning films, and that's Pleasantville. Um, this one's about two siblings, a brother and a sister, who go accidentally get trapped inside of one of their TV shows, which is black and white. Now, when they're in this world that's set in the 50s, they sort of interact with things and start changing some things, and then the world starts having some color pop up here and there, until eventually the whole world is filled with color. It's just such a stunning film, visually, in my opinion, that goes from this black and white to full color, and you really get this sense of beauty, both black and white, transition, and color. It's an amazing film. The story is really good. It's got a ton of great stars in it, especially pre, like, their big roles. Like, it's got Paul Walker in it. It's got um, Amy Adams in it. It's got Tobey Maguire was still pretty big then, but I don't think he was in Spider-Man yet. Uh, Reese Witherspoon, Jeff Daniels, there's tons and tons of stars in this one. But it's not about the stars. The story is good, and the visuals are beautiful. Check this one out, please. Finally, for television, I decided to go with what has been probably some people have been talking about that I need to recommend. I'm finally recommending it, and I'm going to do Breaking Bad. Now, if you're like me, I completely missed the train on this one. I did not watch it when it was on TV, when it was caught fire, when there was this massive following of Breaking Bad. I missed that completely. I just wasn't into it at the time. Um, I finally decided I need something to watch. I need a TV show to watch. So I finally said, you know what? Breaking Bad. I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to watch it. I was a little bit hesitant, but the first episode, man, it had me hooked. This, ep this show was amazing. I understand now why everyone was freaking out so much about it. It's so amazing. I just kept going episode to episode to episode. I need to go to sleep. One more episode. One more episode. This is a phenomenal series. It's about a chemistry teacher who gets cancer, and then he decides to start making meth. I really don't think it does the show justice to tell you more than that. Definitely check it out, because there's so many things that happen in this series. It's only six seasons. It, well, I think it's like five. They split the last season. But I think it says it does six on Netflix, if I'm not wrong. Um, but check it out. It's an amazing series. You will not be able to stop yourself from going to the next episode until you finally get to that last episode. It's an amazing series, beautifully done. Definitely check it out. Well, guys, those are my best of Netflix that I have for you guys this week. Um, definitely check them out. Let me know what you think about them. Let me know on social media. Let me know really what you, th yeah, let me know what you think. I mean, I want to get some feedback for you guys. I'm dying for feedback. I feel like I'm talking to myself sometimes here. Um, so definitely, like I said, check them out. Talk to me about them. Um, also, really quick, I'm going to be taking a bit of a break. I'm headed back home for a little while, um, probably about a week and a half, week or so. 
So I'm going to be taking a break from doing some videos. But with Captain America Civil War coming out, I'm definitely going to try and make a video for that. I'm going to try and sneak it in somewhere. Um, if there's any big news, follow me on social media. My uh, Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram. My Instagram is probably my biggest one that I post the most on. Um, but follow me for sure. I'm going to be posting things probably, I'm sure, tons of times. Whatever news there is, I'll post it. But I'm definitely going to try and sneak in a Captain America Civil War um, video at some point. Hopefully I will be able to see it soon because my anxiety is driving me insane. Um, so definitely follow me. Make sure you check in with me because I'm probably going to post at least some things. So definitely follow me. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Oh, by the way, um, before I go, tomorrow I'm also doing my May picks, which I'll post again on my social media, my reviews for that. So be sure to check out that video and then watch those films. We can discuss them at the end of the month. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it very, very much. Like always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.